Hey guys, it's a Tuesday afternoon. I'm on my way to my afternoon classes. I figured while I'm on the way, they're saying hi. There we go. They have a lot of nice plants and bushes over here. Figured while I'm on the way, I would just get, make this quick video. Hopefully it will be quick. I always say that, and then I wind up rambling and going off the rails about something, but I'll try to make it quick. Uh, these are just some general tips from me to you, things I have learned since I've been in Cambodia. Uh, things that will make your life easier, hopefully. Maybe a little safer, a little more comfortable. At least they worked for me. You can accept my advice. You can choose to reject it. Choice is yours. I mean, I'm not a dictator. <laughs> Do what you want with it. But these are things that have worked for me, have, that have helped me, and I want to share them with you. <clears throat> the first thing is, and uh, I believe either my last video or the video before, I talked about checking your money for US dollar bills or US bills, USD bills, I should say that uh, have the presidents with the small heads on there because they don't take them here. There's an age cutoff for the bills they will take here. I didn't know what year, but one of my, uh, as always, smart uh, subscribers told me uh, that that was the year 2003. So, to be safe, I would go up one year because she says she's pretty sure not exactly sure but uh, sounds about right if you're going to bring cash over here USD US dollars if you're going to bring cash with you on your flight uh, check it good before you leave if you have any bills that are ripped torn written on or wrinkled or any that are dated pre 2004 I would go to the bank and exchange them before you get here Otherwise, you might find that you're sitting on a pile of worthless cash that nobody will take in exchange for goods and services. That would not be a good thing. So, yeah, that's my first piece of advice. If you're bringing money over here, make sure it's all in order before you get on the plane. Uh, advice number two. Cambodia is very hot. It's by the equator. Um... It's a tropical environment all year round. Therefore, you have a lot of critters, a lot of bugs, a lot of insects. A lot of these, you are not going to know what they are. A lot of them you might recognize, but whatever the case, um, if you're not sure if it's poisonous or venomous, uh, don't touch it. <laughs> I think that's pretty obvious, but some people curiosity might get the better of them but uh, just don't do it second <clears throat> and this is a big one it's common here in most buildings when you walk inside to take off your shoes uh, it's a Buddhist thing now of course in your own place you don't have to if you don't want to but if uh, Khmer people see you not doing it they they're not gonna say anything and they're not gonna be your enemy but they will take note it's kind of disrespectful So, like, uh, even in my apartment, even before I met Seng Lai, I always took my shoes off, flip-flops, whatever, before I walked in. And if you noticed in any of my videos, you'll see rows and rows of shoes and flip-flops outside people's doors. Just the way it is. But what I was saying, see, like I told you, I go off the rail sometimes. But what I was saying is, before you put on your clothes, whether they're socks, pants, shirts, even t-shirts, shoes, especially... <clears throat> always give them a little shake shake them out first there are lots of bugs lots of creepy crawlers lots of critters here and you don't want to put on a pair of uh, underwear you just got out of your dresser or whatever and find a uh, eight-legged surprise inside there <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean you just don't want that and I have taken clothes that have been sitting in my wardrobe for a period of time I've taken them out and had a giant spider about the size of my fist 
and I'm not even lying. It was it's on my Facebook page still somewhere. I took a picture. It just fell out. It somehow crawled up in my wardrobe, got between two pairs of pants. When I went to take the one pair of pants out, it just fell out. So it's always good to shake everything out before you put it on, just to be sure. Especially your shoes, because like I said, it's customary to take them off outside. Chances are bugs and creepy crawlies will get in there, get in your shoes and things if they're outside, especially if they're going to be outside all night. So, pick it up, give it a little shake, pound them together upside down, whatever, just to be sure. <clears throat> Because even if something's not poisonous, uh, I don't think there's a worse feeling. You go to put on a pair of socks and you feel something crawling on your foot. You go to put on a shirt and something's crawling down your back. Uh, just better to do that. Uh, number three, the food situation. Don't be afraid of the food. Seriously, don't be afraid of the street food. Uh, some people are under the impression because Cambodia is a developing country that other food is unhygienic, being mishandled. And uh, they seem to be under the impression that they're trying to poison you. That is not the case, again. Uh, especially in towns like Siem Reap, Phnom Penh, Sinukville, Battambang, heavy tourist areas. The last thing a restaurant wants is a reputation for making people sick. Okay, they start getting reviews like that coming in. They go out of business. They don't make money. They don't want you to get sick out their food. They want your food to be delicious. They want you to enjoy it. They want you to tell your friends. They want you to come back. It's a business. So don't be afraid to eat it. Now, that being said, if something looks uncomfortably high, unhygienic to you, then just go on to the next one. Whatever it is you want to eat there, you can find somewhere else. Okay? So don't put your life at risk, <clears throat> but trust me, the majority of people don't want to risk going out of business. Speaking on that, you will at some point get what's commonly known as food poisoning. Because of the heat and humidity, bacteria lives here a lot longer than it would in the West. It's just a, just a fact. And there's a lot of bacteria here and things you're going to eat that will be introduced to your system that you will not find in the West. Your body's not going to like that. It's going to try to reject it through one end or the other because it, it believes, it, your body believes it's getting invaded. It's trying to kick out the stranger that just crashed the party. That's all right. You'll be down for a couple days maybe sometimes, maybe a little bit longer, but you're not going to die. Your body, like... Uh, what I'll talk about next, the heat, you have to adapt to it. You have to give yourself time to get used to that bacteria. By the, and the more you eat locally, the faster that will happen. But it's not going to kill you. You're going to be fine. And I know it's not going to feel like it when you're not going anywhere because you can't be away from a toilet seat for longer than five minutes at a time for a couple days. But trust me, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And then the heat, like I said, it's a tropical environment. It's very, very hot here all the time. Uh, just the way it is. You'll have to assimilate, assimilate to that, especially if you come from a place like I do where it's cold, snowy, and icy almost six months out of the year. Then you move to a place that never gets cold, never gets snow, never gets ice. That's one advantage, I think, of me walking around instead of buying a motorbike right away I mean I had to get used to the heat I I had to uh, get used to the element being out in the elements I didn't like to get out when I was back in at home but here it's like hey if I want to eat guess what I'm gonna have to walk I don't have a motorbike I don't want to spend money unnecessary money on a tuk tuk I'm gonna have to walk so it's just the way it is but again be careful keep yourself hydrated you can buy water uh, anywhere on your walks. If you're feeling thirsty, buy a water. 1,000 real for a small one, 2,000 real for a great big one. Uh, the, the house ones, the big ones you put in your house that you can fill up your empty plastic bottles and keep in your fridge, uh, 21 liters, I think it is, or something. I think 
I'm not sure. They're they're real big and real heavy. But anyway, those are only that mine only cost me three thousand real. That's seventy five cents. Fresh, clean drinking water. So you should never dehydrate yourself. Always be drinking water. Plus any number of assortment of good stuff for you. Aloe vera juices with different flavorings. Uh, they got straight up fruit juices. Like fresh fruit juices, not the processed kind you you might be used to. Uh, they got water. They got the standard Western uh, stuff. Coke. Coca-Cola is big over here. Sprite is really big over here. Yeah, you can buy that too if you want, but that's not going to keep you hydrated. So remember to stay hydrated. As far as safety, use your common sense and you'll be fine. I've said this before, I'll say it again. If you have expensive things, don't be showing them off in public. A lot of people come over here and seem to want to let everybody know that they've got on a $10,000 necklace and a you know, $5,000 watch. Well, that's a good way for somebody to come and uh, take it away from you walking home one night. So don't do that. Second, if there's someplace you wouldn't go where you're from, don't do it here. If you wouldn't go down a dark alley at night with people you don't know hanging around at the end of it, at home, don't do that here. It's really common sense. And never carry anything with you that you cannot afford to lose. Just in case. It might not even be a case of you getting ripped off. You might lose it. It might drop out of your pocket. If you're like me, you're going to be wearing a lot of shorts. Some of these shorts have very shallow pockets. You sit down. When you get up, you don't realize your wallet fell out. You don't want all the money you own to be in that wallet. All right? So just common sense things. And if you're a guy, don't carry your wallet in your back pocket. It makes a very discernible bulge back there. People know what's going on in there. Get in crowded areas, you're gonna get some pickpockets now and again. Don't be the one to get taken like that. If you have cargo shorts, put them in one of your cargo pockets, button it up. Put it in your front pocket so you can just reach your hand in there and you got your hand around it. Uh, like I said, very common sense stuff. And you will be fine. I've never been ripped off since I've been here. I've never been scammed. I've never been asked to, uh, for a bribe, for anything. Although there are people who will swear this whole country is nothing but corrupt people who only want your money. I've never experienced that, so. But use your common sense. And I think you'll be good. Uh, using the ATMs, I've talked about this in other videos, but if you're coming over here and you don't want to dig through my videos to, to find ones to, for a, that specific subject, if you have a bank account back home, you'll have a debit card, you can get money from ATMs. <clears throat> However, they will charge you a fee anywhere from 2 to $9, depending on how much you're getting out. So I always suggest getting out the maximum instead of $20, $30 every few days get out as much as you'll need for the month <clears throat> keep it secure in your room or wherever you're living and just take with you when you go out what you think you'll need maybe a little bit more just to be safe for the most part it's it's much safer I've said this before see them reap is much safer than where I came from so I've never felt threatened or like I said I've never been ripped off asked for a bribe none of that but it does happen. So keep your wits about you <clears throat> and you'll be fine. Only go to the ADM, ATM to take out the money. Like I said, I would suggest taking it out once a month. And once again, you may accept that advice or not. But at the minimum, you're gonna get $2. So if you keep taking out $20 at a time, getting charged $2, and you're spending $700 a month, that's gonna add up to a lot of money at the end of each one, right? Take it out once, pay the nine bucks, get it over with. When you can, open a bank account here. That way you'll get one of their debit cards and you will not have a fee to take money out of their ATMs. All right, that's about it for now. I did have a couple more things when I'm at the school. Uh, Got to get ready for my class. So I'll talk to you guys in the next one.